Hi and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about something that hits very close to home for me. That is panic disorder and anxiety attacks. So I'm going to probably try to break up this video a little bit. Um, it's going to be kind of a long one. I don't really know how to explain it in a way that... Wait, sorry. I'm going to maybe try to see if I can break up this video in some way because I have a feeling it's going to end up being a little bit long. I've had such a long journey throughout my entire life with panic disorder. When I was a little kid, I didn't really have the best home life. I'm super grateful for the family that I have and I really do love them all so much, but I didn't really have the most stable home life. My mom and my dad fought a lot. They were divorced, but um, every other weekend we would go with my dad and every single time he picked me up, what myself and my brother up, to go, um, it was constant fighting for at least like a good hour and a half. So just going back and forth between my mom and my dad felt super stressful for us. And um, I had two older sisters, they're technically my half sisters, but anyone who knows, knows that that does not count at all. It doesn't matter. And, um, and they had sort of started to notice that I would get really overwhelmed and just vomit all the time. I would just throw up. And this was happening when um, I'd walk into a room and there was a scary movie on. It would happen during the times where my dad had to pick us up. It would happen going on to long trips, um, whenever there was any kind of conflict in my life. And everyone thought I had stomach issues, so they took me to a lot of doctors to try to figure out what was going on with my stomach. And of course, no one could find anything. Um, I remember I was about maybe six and a half, seven, and I had to get a, a tube going down my throat into my stomach, which was terrifying for me. And no one could figure out why I was just vomiting all the time. And it was such a unique sensation. It wasn't nausea, it was just whoosh, like over my body. And um, I just didn't know how to identify that feeling because I was so young. Flash forward, I'm 13 and my mom is um, with a man who was our stepdad for a little while. And um, my brother and I both had the stomach flu. And it was so bad that we couldn't keep any solids down, any water down. And uh, we had to go to the hospital because we were so dehydrated that our veins literally collapsed. So they had to get an IV in us as quickly as possible. And um, that in itself was horrifying because they had to stab me 13 times before they could find a workable vein. But being in the hospital overnight on that IV made us better like that because, you know, we were getting everything we needed to fight off this stomach virus. And my brother, um, about two days after we were in the hospital, just skips right off to school. But I'm still waking up every morning and I just can't do it. I wake up and I just feel this overwhelming sensation. And I didn't really know how to pinpoint it, especially in the household I grew up with or grew up in, which is very, either we don't talk or we're yelling at each other. There's nothing in between. So, I mean, now of course that we're all old, older there is, and like my siblings and I kind of run the show, but uh, we talk about everything, every single emotion all the time. But um, back then, there wasn't really like a guide to being able to understand who we are and what we felt. So I didn't realize I was feeling just this intense fear. And it wasn't a fear over anything. It was just this adrenaline rush that would be released through my body. And it was my fight or flight. So at that time, my then stepdad had sort of realized and said to my mom, I think she's having panic attacks. And I couldn't go to school for about two weeks. And that was pretty 
devastating for me because I really fell behind. And at that point, I was a really great student. Now, this ended up carrying me through, uh, carrying all the way through high school, college, and, you know, when I was 13, I started behavioral modification therapy, um, and it was a lot of, oh, just take the rubber band on your wrist and count back from 100, and I was like, no, 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 this shit isn't going to work for me, and um, I just couldn't really get into that. There, I just, it didn't work. I don't know why, it just didn't work. And maybe because I still had a lot of problems going on at home, because I had problems going on at school, um, I needed definitely a different kind of therapy, something that made me feel much more in control of my life, much happier in my life. And um, I would say I couldn't really get that until I was older. But having panic attacks became a regular thing, um, waking up with them in the middle of the night. When I get a panic attack, it manifests in a very paralyzing way. And I'm sure everybody feels like that. But I mean, I'm not sure that I can stand and put one foot in front of the other when I get them. I feel deep nausea. My stomach is in a knot. I feel like I can't breathe. I feel dizzy. Usually the only thing that makes me feel better is throwing up. But it usually takes me being stuck in that condition for about a half hour to an hour before I can finally get myself worked up enough to vomit. And that sounds pretty bad, I'm assuming, to all of you out there. It's not fun. For Anybody who has it or anyone who has a child with it or a friend with it, I want you to know that they can't help it. They're doing their best. They really are. And it's probably nothing that anyone would choose, though now that I'm older, I realize I've learned so many lessons from having it. So essentially the way that I explain to friends and family or people who don't understand what panic disorder is, how it manifests, all of that, is um, using a few analogies. The first would be that imagine that you have a soda bottle and um, it's filled with your adrenaline and that soda bottle tells you like when you're in danger and when something's scary and so that's really helpful if you're in the woods and you see a bear and your soda bottle opens and it says either fight the bear or run away from that damn bear. And, um, but people who have panic disorder have a faulty cap on their soda bottle. So their cap just comes off and it floods into their body and they're doing nothing but just reading a book at the library and all of a sudden your brain's basically saying, there's a bear, there's a bear, there's a bear. <laughs> there's no bear. So basically there's a disconnect between your brain and your body because your body starts to physically manifest the idea that you are somehow not safe and your brain is basically not able to send messages to your body to tell it that it's safe because it's going to go and try to help the hypothalamus in your brain. So it's sending all of the air and all of the blood flow down to your hypothalamus. It's trying to basically protect that area of your brain. So your prefrontal cortex, which is your reasoning and what tells you like, no, 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 that's a stupid fear. I can get over this. Or, you know, basically all of your re like reasonable decision making um, completely shuts down. That would be the best way that I could describe it to someone who doesn't have it. It's the best way that I could really conceptualize it for my friends and family. That I feel like a bear is attacking me when I'm just waking up in the morning sometimes. So it's definitely something that requires a lot of patience, requires a lot of self-love, it requires stepping back and not judging yourself. I still haven't been able to master it, but I can tell you that yoga has really helped me 
that ability to stay in something uncomfortable and breathe through it. Meditation has really helped me. It helps change the way I think about things. It helps me be able to just take one breath at a time. Um, and medicines have really helped me. I've tried Klonopin, which is meant to be a sort of fast relief medication to take as needed. I unfortunately was on it for a bit too long. Wasn't a great experience. I've am recently trying Effexor, which is technically an antidepressant, but works wonders with anxiety. And I have felt a great relief from that. And basically what I've realized personally is any time where my life feels like I'm not driving the car, where I feel like other people are sort of telling me what to do or I'm not um, viewing things positively, I'm not taking charge of the things I want, when I'm kind of putting myself mentally in a place where I feel like I'm, I don't know, kind of like a victim or I'm not um, in control, when I, I, I know I'm always in control, this is my life. If I want to move, I move. If I want to quit a job, I quit. If I want to leave my marriage, I leave my marriage. I mean, I don't, and I'm not gonna. But just saying, like, these are the things that I know I actually do have control over. There are times where things get so overwhelming that we don't know that we have control. So just kind of always reminding myself that I have control, staying in that mindset, and then also knowing that I have the ability to let go of that control are huge. And um, learning exercises that help you through those anxiety-filled moments. Breathing is so important because like I said, your prefrontal cortex shuts off during a panic attack. So you wanna make sure you're taking long inhales, count, count to five or six, hold it at the top, breathe out five or six, just extend the breath as long as you can. Just in and out. Because basically what you wanna do is try to turn on this side of your brain and it helps, it really does help. And this is something that I've always struggled with. This is something that I am so open to talk about with other people. I know what it is to struggle with this. I know how hard it is. My husband knows how hard it is for me. We both know how hard it is to be in a relationship when you're suffering with this. And, um, I mean, one, I'm super grateful that I have someone in my life that is there who helps me, who understands. And part of understanding sometimes is knowing that you can't do anything for that person. But ultimately, I think doing therapy, meditation, yoga, that's gonna help you if you're suffering from panic disorder. And just take it one step at a time. If you're too afraid to go to a yoga class right now, if that's so overwhelming, if you have become agoraphobic and you can't leave your house, just go onto YouTube, type in gentle flows. Take it one step at a time. Um, I'm gonna do a video on my favorite meditation apps. Take it just one you know, minute at a time. 30 seconds at a time, anything you can do. Because it's an uphill battle, but once you get to the top, it feels amazing. Once you know that you're capable, that you are enough, and that you can conquer the world, like just say that to yourself. I'm capable, I'm enough, and I can conquer the world. I am the vehicle of my own magic and of my own happiness. When you say these sort of things to yourself, when you get into that mindset, it's gonna help you control the anxiety so much more. It's gonna get you on those flights. It's gonna get you to 
you know, that trip. It's going to get you to the stage. It's going to get you to the photo shoot, get you on the train, get you in the cab, like, you know, anything, get you to school, get you to take that test, get you to apply for your MBA, like anything you want. It's going to get you there. But it does take work. And I will 100% receive any email from any of you, you know, just Rachel S. Forrester at gmail.com. I will take any email from you guys with any tips I can give you, with any love I can give you. Because like I said, as young as five years old, I have experienced this sensation and it isn't easy. But there are so many people out there, over 60 million Americans alone have experienced panic disorder at some point in their life. So, you can get through this. I can get through this. I hope I am giving you guys a bit of hope. I hope that I'm giving you a little bit of understanding and that you feel as if you can take the extra step. Email me, comment below with any questions. Comment below if you liked this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video or you found it helpful. And um, subscribe, always subscribe. And um, I'm definitely gonna talk more about this. I'm gonna talk about meditation, yoga, things like that as well. It's not just all fashion and beauty. Um, and we're all gonna get through it, I promise you. <laughs> Have a great day and I'm sending you lots of love.